Welcome everyone. It's awesome to see such a, a big turnout and people that I actually recognise from the last conference. So welcome back. That's wonderful. I'm here to give your brains a rest. You can relax. You can take off your thinking caps. It is a very different talk to what everyone else has given you today. There is no science. There is no history. And I'm talking about everyone's favourite topic, well mine at least, food and treats. <coughs> Specifically low carb and keto treats. So it's super practical. I don't even have any words other than, I think, my name. It's going to be lots of photos. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about myself and how I got into it. My background is actually in exercise science. My postgrad studies were in sports nutrition. I own a Pilates and functional training studio. I was the host and creative director of Aerobics Art Style for many years. Um, I now work for another company. We do a lot of online fitness content for an international market because apparently no one watches TV anymore and it's all internet based. And more importantly, I'm the mum of three. My biggest job. I've been low carb for well over 10 years and keto probably for about three. And the first thing that people say to me when they find out that I'm low carb, actually the first thing is, oh my God, how do you live without bread? So the second thing is people say to me is, but does that mean you never eat treats and you never have chocolate? And I'm like, God no, how do you live without chocolate? <laughs> the difference is I won't go and buy myself a crunchy or a Kit Kat. I will have real chocolate, 85% probably minimum, 90% or I've discovered a 99% that is fabulous. And to me, that is chocolate, that is my treat. And that is kind of where I go with when I design my recipes and, and come up with treats for me, for Duran and for the kids. So really low carb, really high fat, full of good nutrition, um, but not necessarily sweet. So I'm going to talk to you about two different types of treats that I do. One, which is essentially proper keto treats, which I make for Duran and I, which I don't use any form of sweetener in them. And one of the things I found is that when I do go on Google and look up you know, keto recipes and keto desserts, most of them do have a lot of artificial sweeteners. And in my, it's, it's a personal thing. I just think if you're giving your body those hits of sweetness all the time, you're going to keep craving those hits of sweetness. So I don't use any form of sweetener in our treats, but I promise you they are still delicious. I wish I could have brought samples today. Ah, oh, hang on, I don't need to be there yet. So the other thing that I'm going to talk about is kids' treats. I get asked constantly, having a, I've got a nearly four-year-old, a six-year-old, and an eight-year-old. What do you do with your kids? What do you feed them? And my kids are not keto by any means, but they are definitely lower carb. And I don't give them preservatives and artificial anything. So I try and give them, when I give them treats, I will use things to sweeten it with, like banana, like date. I sometimes will even use a little bit of maple syrup. But I use very small amounts. And when I adapt recipes, I'll explain to you how you can wean your kids. Because a lot of people say, but my kids, you know, they eat cupcakes and chocolate and that. And when I give them this, they're not interested in it. There are ways to work around that and to start bringing things down. And we'll go through that. So the first one, I have to point out that clearly I'm not a food stylist and I'm definitely not a photographer. So just, and any of the photos that are even reasonable are Duran's photo is not mine. So this is, the, this is my a really go-to dessert when I have people over for dinner. It is so simple and it is literally those ingredients. The thing that I will adjust, if I have keto people coming over, which is pretty much most of our family, we'll use 90% chocolate. And if I am having any non-keto people, we'll mix, or for the kids, I'll mix 70 to 85%. And they, without any sugar in it, will still eat it. I've never had anyone come over and not have the chocolate mousse. Just to quickly point out that you don't need to worry about writing any of this down. My website is not technically ready to go live, but I have put it up because it's got probably four or five of these recipes already up and it will have them over the next few days, the next few weeks, I will constantly be adding. So please ignore the bits of the website that are not ready. I got it up today so that everyone can at least access it and have the real recipes on there. Um, the next one is a great breakfast one, super easy. The basis of it, it's pancakes, clearly. The basis of it is cream cheese and eggs. So, the one, so when I make it for Duran and I, we'll make literally just the cream cheese and eggs, and I'll sometimes add cinnamon or vanilla, whatever I feel 
we need to put in that. And sometimes also depending on the texture, because this is quite, quite liquidy, you can thicken it up with a bit of coconut flour or a bit of almond flour. When I make it for the kids, I just, just like, I se I take a separate batch and I'll add in some banana into it. And that's the only difference. Serve it up with some heavy cream, some blueberries, good to go. Sorry, this was clearly my photo. All right, so smoothies. I do a smoothie bowl and I do ice cream. And the ice cream comes out literally like a soft serve ice cream. And it is super easy. The only difference between the smoothie bowl and the ice cream is the smoothie bowl will have some yogurt. The ice cream I actually put in ice when I blend it. It's all just done in a high speed blender. All my recipes are really quick and really easy. Between work and the kids, I want to cook for them as much as possible, I want to give, but I want it to be fast. So the basis for this is just frozen banana, cream, vanilla, and then I'll put in some full cream yogurt for the smoothie bowl, and I'll put in some ice for the ice cream, and just blend it. I use a Thermomix, but any high speed blender. And then I just, I just because the kids are gonna get bored if you keep giving them the same thing, I'll keep it with a little bit of vanilla in it if I'm gonna do the banana flavor. I'll add raw cacao if I'm gonna do a chocolate flavor. Here yeah, I was really fancy and I did a, a blend. And I'll add some mesquite powder, which I know a lot of people haven't heard of, and you can get it at any health food store, and you don't need a lot of it, and it just it gives it a really nice caramel flavor. And it's, it's high, I can't even remember, in magnesium and a whole lot of, whole lot of other things. And um, what I'll also do with the kids is if their friends come over and they want, Mum, please, can we have a dessert tonight? I'll do a soft surf ice cream, and then I'll put out desiccated coconut and nuts and maybe a little bit of grated chocolate, and they have a choice of toppings. So it's, you know, like an ice cream bar. This is a new one that I've discovered, and I, um, I'm loving it. It's a pumpkin bread. So we know that pumpkin is already pretty low carb. And I find if you roast the pumpkin in the oven and you let it get to a point where it's quite caramelized, it's got plenty of sweetness in it. So I found a few different recipes. I played around with them. All of them had either maple syrup or honey or sugar, which is the first thing that I just got rid of. So all this has is it's, it's got almond meal and it's got coconut flour. And I, I use both of them a lot, but I find they work best actually together. So you find a good ratio. It's usually, you know, like to be two thirds of a cup almond meal to a third of a cup coconut flour. I play around with it, but together you get the best consistency. And then it's basically that with some baking powder, baking soda, a whole lot of eggs, a whole lot of roasted pumpkin and a whole lot of coconut oil. And then I'll spice it with whatever I feel like it. Here I used vanilla bean, ginger, cinnamon. Sometimes I use a bit of nutmeg. This one's definitely on my website already. What I was doing, I was doing two batches. For this one, the keto version for Daron and I, which I'll serve, you know, just a whole lot of butter. And for the kids, I was adding a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup, um, just to give it that little hint of, of sweetness, and they absolutely loved it. But then I ran out of the kids' one the other day, and I thought, all right, well, just chance my luck. And I gave them ours, and they never said a word. So there goes their version out the window, and now they're gonna be getting the full keto version, because if they didn't notice the difference, then I'm very happy. I try my luck a lot with the kids, we see how it doesn't always work. So what I've been doing with this recipe, this is a really good one. I've been using it with a lot of friends who say to me, you know, my kids are really, I'm finding it really hard to get them to drop their sugars down and drop their carbs down. A friend of mine has just brought out, she's a pediatric nutritionist, she's fantastic. She's just brought out a book called Wholesome Child. It is not low carb or keto, but it is full of a lot of really nutritious recipes. So she does these black bean brownies, she does like cauliflower cupcakes, but I do adjust all her recipes, I have to say. So I use it as a basis. So her recipe, I think the black bean brownies had a half a cup of coconut sugar. And if your kids are used to the normal, you know, white flour, white sugar cupcakes, or or brownies or whatever, this is a great option because you're still getting a lot of good nutrition. It's got, you know, the raw cacao, it's got a lot of coconut oil, it's got a whole lot of eggs in it. Um, it's got the black beans, which I much prefer to having as a base instead of a flour. Um, but I would start them with the half a cup of coconut sugar. Get them eating this, at least they're getting all the other good nutrition and wean them down. Go down from half a cup to just over a quarter of a cup to just under a quarter of a cup. I use two tablespoons of maple syrup when I make them and they are literally borderline savoury. Um, so none of my kids' friends have actually eaten them yet. But my kids, I give it to them with cream and it, it's my eldest's favourite. She absolutely adores it. But they have been weaned down, so it does happen. 
Uh, the other thing, just having said that, if you are trying to do this with your kids at home, you have to be aware of what they're eating elsewhere as well. Because if you're trying to wean them down and adjust their taste buds, but then they're going elsewhere and getting these big hits of sugar, it's going to be a lot harder. Okay, so this, this is my ultimate favorite, and I'm really fancy again, I'm doing top deck. This is my fudge. So this is so easy. This is one of the raw recipes that I do. I do three variations of this. Uh, chocolate, caramel, and vanilla, and then I'll do layers because it's quick and easy. All you're doing is putting macadamia nuts, blanched almonds, desiccated coconuts in a high-speed blender, blend it until it's a paste. You add coconut oil, vanilla, and coconut cream. That's your base. And then if you want vanilla, you add some more vanilla paste. If you want chocolate, you add chocolate, uh, raw cacao, and if you want the caramel, you add mesquite. And I'll, you just basically put it in a loaf tin in the freezer, or the fridge, depending how quick you want things to happen. I tend to put it in the freezer because I want to get going. And then by the time I've blended up the second layer to go on top, I take it out of the freezer, put it on top, done, cut it up into pieces. It works out roughly 13 grams of fat and two, just under two grams of carbs, I think, per piece. So that's one of my, my go-to. The only thing about it is it melts quite quickly. So you want to, if you're going to take it anywhere with you, you take a little cooler bag or you take it from the freezer. So that's just the same recipe, just with the mesquite powder. Peppermint slice. So I've, I've made raw peppermint slice for ages. Um, often when people come over, it's, a, it's also, I like raw. I like it when I don't even have to turn the oven on. And then I suddenly thought a little while ago, well, why don't I make this and just get rid of all the, the sweet stuff in it? Because I did... For the kids, I will use some date in the base layer and a little bit of honey in the middle layer. And so I just got rid of it. And it worked brilliantly. Yes, it's not sweet like the normal one I would make, but it's absolutely fantastic and it's really easy to make. So the base layer, essentially, I used blanched almonds. You're seeing a trend here with my ingredients. Uh, blanched almonds, desiccated coconut, coconut oil, vanilla, raw cacao. So usually that would have um, some date in it. But <coughs> You blend that until you can see it's got a bit of a crumble. You press it down into a loaf tin, pop that in the freezer. And then the second layer, you can soak the cashews if you want to make them softer, and that will give you a smoother consistency, and it's more like a real peppermint slice. Um, but same thing, you just put all of it. I use, I use food-grade uh, essential oil as my peppermint, but you can use uh, just peppermint essence. Some salt, desiccated coconut, coconut cream. You layer that on top pop it back in the freezer, and then you just melt your 90 or 85% or depending on who you're making it for, chocolate over a double boiler, pour that over the top, pop it back in the fridge, you're done. Super, super easy. Um, this is a really, this is another one that I take from Mandy's um, cookbook, the Whole, the Whole Foods one, and what she's done is uh, anyone with kids here knows about cake pops, which you go to the kids' birthday parties and it's cake on a stick dipped in dairy milk chocolate covered in sprinkles. So she came up with a fantastic idea, and I have to say I've used it, is just making bliss balls. And with the bliss balls, you can really use, do it however you want to do it. I tend to cut down on the dates. I still do use dates in it, and try and increase the coconut oil. And what, with that, it gets very melty. But then I found if you do dip it in some chocolate, it holds it together. It doesn't fall apart. So I use nuts if I don't have, obviously, any kids with nut allergies, nuts, seeds, raw cacao, vanilla, and then you dip it in your 70% chocolate and cover it in coconut. So that's a really, really good kid's treat. My final one, just coming out of, of summer now, um, are popsicles. So the keto popsicles literally have three ingredients. I blend, I, I just break up the chocolate into a heat-proof bowl, and then I put the coconut cream and vanilla paste on the stove on a low heat until it warms up, don't let it boil. I pour that over the chocolate, mix it all in, and pop it into the molds. My three-year-old won't eat it, but my six-year-old and eight-year-old will eat it at a 90% chocolate, this one. They love it, they absolutely, it's their, it's their favorite summertime treat. And also, I try and work quite seasonally with the kids, so when, when fruit is in season, I will try and use that. So in, we, we've just also been doing popsicles. Um, when bananas are around, I'll freeze the bananas, and I'll use that as my base for them. So I'll just do a blend of fro frozen banana and coconut cream, as my popsicle base and then add in raw cacao or blueberries or vanilla and then I get fancy and do layers again. It's my new thing. And that's, that's obviously not the keto version but it is still a really healthy treat for the kids. Um, 
And as I said, so feel free to pop onto my website and ignore the stuff that's not ready, but I will be adding, and I constantly add recipes. And also on my Instagram story, whenever I'm trialing something new, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, you can follow that there. But hopefully this has given you some inspiration and some really good practical ideas, and I'm hoping to get to chat to you all later. <laughs>